welcome again. From the previous session, we discussed about uh, the inclusion exclusion principle. And then we did an example on how to use a Venn diagram and inclusion exclusion principle to solve accounting problem. So in this session, we continue the more examples on how to do the counting by use of either Venn diagram or inclusion exclusion principle. So let's check the first problem. So the first problem is that in the year 2011, Fortune magazine surveyed the presidents of 500 largest corporations in the United States. Of these 500 presidents, 310 had degrees in business, 238 had undergraduate degrees in business, and 184 had postgraduate degrees. So there are four questions to respond to. How many presidents had both undergraduate and postgraduate degrees in business? Two, how many presidents had no undergraduate and no postgraduate degree? And three, how many presidents had undergraduate degrees in business and no postgraduate degrees in business? And then lastly, how many presidents had at most one degree? Let's demonstrate how we solve this. Solution. So in this question, we have 500 presidents being surveyed. And then the main things are either if the president is having an undergraduate degree or is having a postgraduate degree. So the main sets here are sets of a set of presidents who have undergraduate degrees or set of presidents who have postgraduate degrees. So we can say, let U be the set of the 500 presidents that were surveyed in this given survey. 500 presidents of largest operation in the US. And let's say S be the number of presidents with undergraduate degrees in business. And then let T be the set of presidents with a postgraduate degree in business. So from the information given, we were told that of these 500 presidents, 310 had degrees of any sort in business. And then 238 had undergraduate degrees, and then 184 had postgraduate degrees in business. So then, from this, it clearly means that cardinality of S is given by 238. Then cardinality of T is given by 184. And then this number 310 means the union of S and T. 
So S union T cardinality is given by 310. So we can use a Venn diagram to illustrate this uh, to solve the equation, or we can use inclusion exclusion principle to solve the first part. So the first part of the equation was asking to find how many presidents had both undergraduate and postgraduate degrees. So the word both undergraduate and postgraduate simply means that the cardinality of S union uh, S intersect T. So Cardinality of S intersect T is what is being asked for in question one. And so this means from the inclusion exclusion principle, S union T cardinality is cardinality of S plus cardinality of T minus cardinality of S intersect T. Then replace the values. So 310 equals to 238 plus 184 minus this unknown. So 238 plus 184 gives 5, 422. So 310 equals to 422 minus cardinality of S intersect T. So make this the subject, take it to the left, it will be positive. So cardinality of S intersect T will be 422 minus 310, which gives us 112. So this will be 112 as the cardinality of S intersect T. So therefore the first question, which was asking for how many presidents had both undergraduate and postgraduate degrees in business is 112. In part two, how many presidents had no undergraduate and no postgraduate degree in business? So we can actually, from the information we have, use a Venn diagram to illustrate that. So in this case, uh, we have if this is our universal set whose cardinality is 500. So let this be set T, set S. And then let this be set T. So if I label this as A, B, C, D, then from part A, B is the same as 112. But we know that the cardinality of S is 238. So which means A plus B should give us 238. So which means a plus B, which is 112, equals to 238. So A alone will be 238 minus 112. So 238 minus 112 gives us 126. So therefore, the number here is 126, and the number here is 112. Then cardinality of T from the information given is 184 and T the same as B plus C equals to 184. So B, which is 112 plus C equals to 184. So this means that C is 184 minus 112 and 184 minus 112 gives you 72. So the value here is 72. Then we know that the whole survey was involving 500 presidents. So which means A plus B plus C plus D is 500. So A plus B plus C plus D is 500. So A is 126, B is 112, C is 72. When we add D, we get 500. So 126 plus 112 plus 72, is given by 310 plus D equals to 500. So D will be 500 minus 310. So D equals to 190. So therefore, D value is 190. 
Now, so the second part was asking us to find the number of presidents who had no undergraduate degree and no postgraduate degree. And clearly, uh, for you to lack either an undergraduate degree or postgraduate degree, then you should be outside these two circles. So the answer is 190. So therefore, the answer to part B is 190. Then C, how many presidents had undergraduate degree in business and no postgraduate degree in business? So then from the Venn diagram, it is very easy to identify that uh, region. So it means you are in set. Uh, for this, uh, to have an undergraduate degree and from our representation, undergraduate degree is set S. So it means you need to be in S, but not in T. And for you to be in S and not to be counted in, to be in set T is simply where we have the small A part. So this is the, part of the set being asked for in that question C. And so the answer will be 126. Then lastly, how many presidents had at most one degree? Now, to have at most one degree means so at most one degree means either you have an undergraduate degree or postgraduate degree, but not both. So at most one degree means one degree or no degree. So uh, if we have this part, so at most one degree means you only either or you only have undergraduate degree or postgraduate degree but not both. Or even, so you have either only undergraduate or only postgraduate, or you are having no degree. So at most, the word at most means the value being referenced to and anything less than that. So the number will be 126 plus 72, then plus 190. So which will give us 126 plus 72, then plus 190. So that will give us 388. So next, I uh, will be discussing how to solve this second problem, uh, which involves a survey for 300 students uh, in terms of the subjects uh, they do. Thank you.